This video is going to cover some basics on using just a, a regular if else statement in Unity um, using C sharp. Now conditional statements are really um, just a way that you can um, have the computer make decisions. You can branch off to other areas or give different dynamic feedback depending on what happened. Um, this syntax here, this basic if-else statement structure, is really common to a lot of other languages. So um, this here is um, C Sharp, but it looks almost the same in things like JavaScript. Um, so it really works about the same, so you, this can bridge multiple languages. And the way this is set up is you actually write the word if, and then parentheses, and the condition you'd like to check goes inside the parentheses. So that is going to be um, checking to see if a certain condition is true. And then you have open and closing curly braces. And in this section, that part's going to run if the condition you're checking is true. And if it's not, it'll then run in this else section. So then you have the word else, open, close, curly braces. So it's pretty straightforward. You just um, say what you'd like to happen if something's true. Otherwise, you want this to happen. So for this to work, we use something called a relational operator. And what I've got here is just an example of how this works out, because whatever condition you write is going to return something called a Boolean value. And that means it's going to be either true or false. So I'm using the examples four and 54 to write out some of the relational operators. And I'm sure you've seen these before in different ways in math throughout your life. So let's look at this expression. So we've got four is less than 54. So if I said that, you could know that that's true, right? Four is actually less than 54. So if you saw this expression, that's true. Now this next one, four is greater than 54. That's not true, right? So that would return a false. If you wanna check if something's equal, you use actually two equal signs. Um, a single equal sign is the assignment operator, so you use that for variables to assign a value. So in this case, if you ever want to check to see if a, a number is equal to something else, use the two equal signs. So is 4 equal to 54? No, it's not. So it would return a false. In this one, 4 is less than or equal to 54. That would be true, right, because 4 is less than 54. 4 is greater than or equal to 54. No, that's false. And then here, if you see the exclamation point, that means not. So if you see exclamation equals, it means 4 is not equal to 54. And that's true also. So when you are evaluating to see statements, generally you'll be using those relational operators. Now let me show you a basic example, and then we'll jump over into Unity and um, see it in action. So a really simple example would be, like, let's say I wanted to um, uh, check to see if somebody's lucky number is the same as mine. And since we're not dealing with UI here, I'm just using a, a public integer to kind of simulate that's what the user typed in. So let's say we uh, the person's lucky number is 3. Now let's say my lucky number is 7 what we can do is check if it's equal to it. So if essentially their lucky number is equal to seven, notice the double equal sign there. So if their lucky number was equal to seven, it would say, that's my lucky number two. Otherwise, it's going to say yours is different than mine. So in this case, if since theirs is three, it would go here and say is lucky number, which is three here, is three equal to seven? No, that's false. So that means it's gonna skip over this section and run the else. So it'll only display out yours is different than mine. So I think it works um, best to actually show this in Unity. So let me jump over to that. All right, so I have a blank Unity um, project. Let me get started by setting up a C-sharp script. So I'm gonna right click in my assets panel and say create C-sharp script. And I want to give it a name, so I'll just call it um, a demo. Really, I'm going to give it a capital D. 
really um, creative here. Now I need to have that script somewhere in the hierarchy attached to a game object, otherwise it's not going to run. So I'm going to go ahead and add an empty game object. So I went to create empty. I'm going to rename that. I'm just going to call that script. And I'm going to drag my script to that. Okay, so let's go in here and check it out. So now we'll be in Visual Studio. And once again, it sets up the um, kind of the template that Unity wants me to use. And we're not really using these, so I could probably just get rid of it. So if you recall, things in Start are going to run one time. Things in Update would run multiple times, once per frame. So we're not going to be needing Update at all. I'm just going to get rid of that just to get it out of the way. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of this too. All right. So since this right now isn't dealing with actual UI, I'm going to set up a, a public variable that will show up in the inspector so we can change it and try out different values for this if statement. So let's say I want to uh, make a, a simple program to make sure if I um, am running out of donuts, I need to either go buy some more or I, I know everything's enough, everything's good. So I'm going to set up um, a variable, a public integer. I'm going to call it donuts. And let's say in this case, it's going to start out with four donuts. All right. Notice this is outside of my method start, but inside my class. So I've got my open and curly brace for my class, and that's where I'm putting my donuts variable. So now inside of start, I want to put my conditional statement. So I'm going to write if, parentheses, and then I'm going to check to make sure that I have at least one donut. So what I want to say is donuts is greater than or equal to one. So that means as long as I have at least one donut, it will run this section of code. So um, if I have one or more donuts, it will say this. I'm going to go ahead and debug log I'm glad I have some to eat. Okay, so what this should do is I've got four donuts. It'll check here if donuts is greater than or equal to one, four is greater than or equal to one, so that would be true, it would run this. Now if I don't have this, notice I don't have an else in this case, um, it would do nothing if I don't have enough donuts. So let's go to Unity and try it out. I'm going to save this jump over to Unity, and um, we're going to look at the console here. I'm going to hit play. So it should say, I'm glad I have some to eat. So let's look at the, I'm going to hit stop. Let's look at the script here. Over in um, the inspector, my demo script has a variable called donuts, and right now it has a value of four. Now if I changed it to something else, um, if I made it anything greater than four, it would still have the same output because I still have enough donuts. But what if I said zero, okay, and then I hit play. Now notice nothing shows up at all. Now that's not an error. It's actually um, just not running the section of the if statement because let's say donuts was zero. If zero is greater than or equal to one, well, it's not. It won't run this. If this is false, it won't run. So how about we add in the else to um, account for that? So it'll give us a, some sort of output if it's not true. So to do that, all I do is type else and then another set of curly braces. Notice I'm not putting another parentheses here at this point. So it'll do this section if it's true and any other answer or anything, it will do the else. So I'm going to... Just go like this, and my response would be, let's say I'm out of donuts. I need to go buy some more. 
So let's jump over to Unity and try this out. Okay, so when you change something in the inspector, it, it kind of overrides the value in the script. So right now it still thinks it's zero. And let's leave that that way and let's see what happens if I hit play. Now it says I need to go buy some more. So it changes the value or the response based on what the value is. Now let me hit stop. Let's change this to, let's say I bought another dozen donuts. I hit play and now it says I'm glad I have some to eat. So it will change the value based on what this is. So now you can also do um, calculations and other things inside your, your if statement. It doesn't need to only be a single line. It could be whole sections of code. So let me add a couple of things. So let's say I have, um, so let's say a dozen is 12 donuts, right? And Okay, and let's say um, that at this point I've eaten um, zero, okay? So let's say I go here and I have, I'm glad I have some to eat, and eaten equals dozen minus donuts. So this eaten, the zero is actually just a placeholder. It will be calculated here. So what's going to happen is it's going to take the value of dozen, which is 12. It's going to subtract out how many donuts I have left, and it'll put it into the variable eaten. So if you recall, we have the value on the right. It goes into the variable on the left. And then I can output it. Okay, so what I've got here is it, if I have more than one or more donuts, it'll say I'm glad I have some to eat. It will calculate how many we um, ate by how many donuts are left. And it's going to go, I started with a dozen and we ate um, whatever that ends up being donuts. So let me save that. And, okay, so donuts, let's go back, let's change that back to four, which would be kind of where we started in the first place. And if I hit play, now it says, I'm glad I have some to eat because I do have four donuts. I started with a dozen and we ate eight donuts. So you can um, do other things inside your if statement. Now, I also want to show you what happens if um, you check strings. It doesn't just have to be numbers. Um, so here's a totally different um, uh, program, essentially. Um, now the structure of the if statement is really the same, so I'm just going to do this so I don't have to type as much. But let's say um, I can have a variable that's going to hold somebody's answer. And in this case, the answer is going to be a lowercase y. And so let's say... Um, the question is, um, do you like chocolate? Now, this is going to output to the, um, the console. It's not something super interactive. It's just going to be pulled from this um, variable. So it's just kind of a, um, a label that's going to display. So if the answer is the lowercase y. So notice I have the double equal signs. Then we're going to display, I like chocolate too. Okay. And if it's anything else besides that lowercase y, I'm going to say, you don't. Wow. Okay, so it's going to check to see if they entered a lowercase y, and if it does, I'll say I like chocolate too. Otherwise, it'll say you don't. Wow. So let's save this and see what this looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And with the default 
answer of lowercase y. It says, do you like chocolate? I like chocolate too. Now if I hit stop and I put in any other value, um, if I say no way, for instance, it'll say, do you like chocolate? You don't? Wow. Now here's the thing. The condition needs to be very specific. So if somebody answers yes and hit play, it'll say, do you like chocolate? You don't? Wow. And that's because this uppercase yes doesn't exactly match that single lowercase y. And in fact, I can't even just put an uppercase y. If I do, here we go, oops. If I hit uppercase y and I hit play, it still thinks I don't like chocolate because uppercase y is not the same as lowercase y. So if I did want uppercase y, I would need to do that. If I wanted a lower, uh, like, yes, I would need to enter that. It needs to be exact. So next week I will be covering um, how to check multiple um, values and then it would respond appropriately. But really in the end, the big thing to remember is with an if statement, you've got the word if, anything in the parentheses is what you're checking to see if it's true. If it is, it runs the first part. If it's not, it'll run anything after the else.